vibration in x direction and y direction and z direction. Therefore, let's start with a simple degree of freedom system. Because that will provide us general understanding of complicated vibration systems. So start with the simplest. So single degree of freedom system. Okay. Let's start with the simple I always believe that if you understand the simplest case, then you can understand general complicated Because complicated case is always composed by many, many, many simplest start with your simplest case. Okay. You don't have to worry about therefore. You know how the simplest case actually behaves. This kind of principle can be applied, applied not only in vibration problem, but also in every case, for example. So, that's Look at the model That has a spring, K, linear spring. Okay, everybody knows what the linear spring is, right? Is that if I apply force to the spring, the displacement is like this, and the slope is K. Okay, that is linear spring. I have a mass over here and I denote mass as an M. And now we are putting name on physical variable. That's one, one thing we can enjoy when we do the engineering or physics. I can name it. You can name K as a choice suitable for you. This is not easy. The right to choose to every time is too much, right? K is kind of simple. Mm -hmm. FMX. Okay. <laughs> now, because this is a single degree of freedom system, we need a form. I want to measure the coordinate starting from the position of equilibrium, meaning that, okay, and I let this go, this would have a static deflection, right? And I want to measure the vibration from this static deflection. So this is the reflection, uh, the position where we have a static reflection. Okay. Then, can it move? There's a static reflection. There's not vibrate, right? So, what is the equation of motion of this? The weight has to be equal to the reaction force. There is no motion, right? right. Well, how can we get the vibration? We need the excitation, right? Excitation. So, say I have an excitation force. a little bit different approach than this is described in the text. Okay, then what, what kind of governing law, I mean, what law really governs 
inspection <laughs> And then there must be some reaction force due to the presence of a spring. Okay? How much reaction force should we will have? Okay. I assume that the coordinate start from here, but I measure the displacement positively, positive with the in this direction. So, when this one has X displacement, I will get the reaction force Kx. Okay. In this way, I keep the sign conversion of coordinate which I use. And that has to be same as balanced. Uh, in that I apply the Newton second law graphically. That the rest of the things I have to do is write down the vector in accordance with the coordinate I use. So, so minus kx because I'm using sign from the positive in this direction, plus Ft is equal to mx double down. This gives me this equation. Right? Later on, when we have a damping like this, then we will have another force acting over here. And then the equation of motion will be Okay. This is the equation of motion. Now. I found that most of the uh, uh, ladies' students are disappeared in this class. Place <laughs> to see this vibration problem. One way is, because we have 